Hey everyone, Justin here. Today I want to talk to you about post-workout recovery techniques, either for after a long race or a really hard workout, or even including stuff that you do day to day to keep you refreshed. So obviously proper recovery is really important not only to reduce pain like with delayed onset muscle soreness, but also so that you can get out there again and attack your next workouts. The thing about recovery is it's not just one thing that you need to do, but rather a system of habits that I think are really important. And individually, they're all gonna do a little bit, but taken together, you're gonna to see some really big progress gains. I'm gonna make a couple claims in this video, and I'm a big believer in science and hard data, so there's gonna be some relevant studies down below. So with that, let's go ahead and dive into number one, and that's uh, two things that are both nutrition-based that make a big difference. A lot of you all have probably heard that what you drink or eat after a workout makes a difference. And the reality is it does. There's hard evidence to back it up. There's some mixed evidence out there saying whether a three to one or four to one carbohydrate to protein mixture is best. I've kind of settled on a three to one. The claims that they're making are that that ratio allows your muscles to best synthesize protein. Anytime you do a workout, your body is going to break down muscle fibers as well as obviously use glycogen for fuel. The interesting thing is based off chemical processes in your body, the best way to actually refill your carbohydrate stores as well as rebuild that lean protein, the ratio that your body likes best is between three to four grams of carbohydrate to protein intake as well as those chemical processes are most active about 30 minutes after a hard workout. Of course, there's always products that you can buy that are gonna help you with those post-run recovery drinks, but for me, day in and day out, the best one that I like is just chocolate milk. You can use the chocolate syrup to impact how many carbohydrates you get, so if you wanna hit that four gram, full glass of 2% milk with a few teaspoons of chocolate syrup coming in around 200 calories with about 24 grams of carbohydrates and about eight grams of protein, which works really well. Product that I've been using a lot lately is this Tailwind Recovery Powder here. So the thing is, I don't use it as much day to day. It's actually kind of expensive, three bucks for one of these bags, which is pretty dang expensive. It just mixes with water. So this is something that I use directly after my races. I really, really like it. 245 calories here, uh, 43 grams of carbohydrates and 11 grams of protein. So closer to that four to one ratio. I just want all the calories I can get. I take one of these as soon as I can after I finish and then another one 20 to 30 minutes later brings me back to life, gets my protein synthesis going. I feel a lot better. Second dietary thing that you may not have heard about, but there's good data out there, preliminary anyway, that says tart cherry juice, which is an anti-inflammatory and an antioxidant can actually reduce the pain during a long endurance effort, as well as delayed onset muscle soreness after a long endurance effort. So the way they've done these testing is eight to 12 ounces a day in the four to five days leading up to an event, and then eight to 12 ounces a day of tart jerry juice in the two to three days after an event. Uh, the study author was quick to point out that apparently it's not optimal during the build phase. So I don't know if this is something you wanna use necessarily every single day constantly, but as a post peak effort, uh, quick recovery. Apparently it's pretty solid. Like I said, check the data out for yourself. All right, so the second big thing that I do for recovery is compression gear. Uh, basically what it comes down to is based off all the studies that are out there, if you're not using some sort of compression gear, you should probably start. A 2017 meta analysis of 23 total studies based off compression gear saw meaningful increases in next day performance, particularly in cycling, which is interesting for triathletes, as well as a marked reduction in delayed onset muscle soreness. The study went on to say that athletes who used compression gear the next day saw a higher amount of maximal strength the following day after a hard effort. So there's a couple options here if you wanna get into compression gear. Unfortunately, it requires buying something. The ones that I use are two times you compression tights. There's a link below. Yeah, if you use the link, it gives me a dollar or two, which I appreciate for the time that I spend on this kind of stuff. Um, but the reason I like those tights, they're coming in about $75, so not insanely expensive. I can wear them underneath clothes. They're super hard to get on, but the idea is they basically constrict your legs from ankle all the way up to your uh, waist. The better but far more expensive option are the uh, electronic air bladder systems that basically surround your legs. They pump up with a lot of air pressure um, in stages, 
pressurized release, pressurized release. I used those after my Ironman. I don't own some, but I was lucky enough to borrow a friend's and they actually felt fantastic. It was an incredibly weird, surreal feeling. But when I got out of them, even after only being in them for 10 or 15 minutes, my legs felt much, much more refreshed. It was really cool. Downside to this system is they're super expensive. Uh, there's two options on the market. Air Relax, which is like $500, and Normatec, which is like $1,500 or $2,000. Really, really expensive. The ones I used were the Air Relaxes. They seemed fine. They're too expensive for my blood. However, at almost any high-end triathlon you go to, you're going to see people with $1,000, $1,500, $2,500 race wheels, which might save one or two or three minutes off over a half Ironman, maybe. Personally, although I haven't bought into the air recovery systems, I would probably be swayed to spend four or $500 on an air recovery system that's going to allow me to train harder day in and day out and get stronger myself rather than spending, you know, four times as much on wheels that don't actually make me faster, but make my time better. I think there's a stronger benefit there that could be made. All right, so number three on the list is foam rolling. And much like compression gear, if you're not using it, you should probably start. Foam rolling is something that I personally avoided for a long time just because I wasn't sure if it was a gimmick or if it was legit. It's legit and there's good science to back it up. A 2015 study said that they saw substantially improved quadricep tenderness by a moderate to large amount in the days after fatigue amongst athletes who foam rolled versus those who didn't. The foam roller that I've got is about $25, $30. Uh, if you're looking for a free option, something that I've done in the past when I forgot my foam roller is take a water bottle that you trust, a good one, uh, fill it up with water, close it really hard, and then you can actually kind of roll on it. It's not ideal and make sure you're using a good water bottle, but it's worked for me in the past. You can also use a medicine ball if you're at the gym that has one of those. The big mistake that I see a lot of people with foam rolling is they go crazy, crazy fast up and down the leg. There's no rush at all. I frequently spend one or two minutes working up just one quad muscle. There's no need to rush. You have as much time as you need. Focus on releasing the muscle. You don't want to stay tensed and press into a tensed muscle. Your goal is to really relax as much as possible. If you're anything like me, you're going to know when you hit it because it feels like your muscle is releasing and releasing and releasing. It's Number four, and this is a weird one because it doesn't seem like a big deal, but I can't recommend this enough, is simply don't stay still. I walk around. You know, you don't have to walk a long way, but especially after you've relaxed for a few hours, just go for a 10, 15 minute walk. I definitely believe in my experience that people who sit around and don't stay active the day after a really hard workout have a much more painful recovery. Allow the muscles to relax, allow everything to get moving. You're totally gonna feel stiff when you start, but you're gonna feel better. All right, the last thing I wanna share with you all is not a recovery tip, it's actually a recovery don't. Because if you're watching this video and you've got a hard race coming up, or maybe you just finished a race and you're here looking for advice, you might be thinking, what can I do to reduce the pain? The big thing I wanna say here is avoid pills. And if you have to take a pill to feel better, take an acetaminophen, which is like an aspirin, rather than an ibuprofen. So particularly if you've had a really hard long effort, like a marathon or longer, or you were out in a really high temperature area where you were dehydrated, all of these things increase stress on your kidneys. Ibuprofen particularly also increases stress on the kidneys. So in a 2017 study, 39 of 89 ultramarathoners had acute kidney injury after completing a 50 mile ultramarathon. Amongst those, there was an 18% higher rate of acute injury amongst people who had taken an ibuprofen immediately following the event versus people who had taken a placebo. So like I said, if you have to take a pill, take an aspirin, it's better. From what I've seen, there's not a lot of hard data that says aspirin is gonna be detrimental to your health following a hard effort, but the big thing I'll implore you to do is don't take an ibuprofen. So with that, a few things that are gonna make your recovery a little bit easier. Hope you found this helpful. If you wanna subscribe, come back for more training tips, gear reviews, all that fun stuff. Hope you do. If you found it helpful, I hope you give it a thumbs up. And lastly, if you have any recovery tips or anything like that, leave them down below for everybody else to enjoy. And as always, when you're done with YouTube today, I hope you have a fantastic day. Get outside, do kick-ass workout of your own, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.